Welcome back to MAW Tips. This is going to apply to a very, very minute sector of cleaning. Those who are in this sector, excuse me, some of you who are in this sector will need to know how to move and the best way to move. So the people who I'm, I'm talking about are the ones who are working by remote for route work. Remote route work is the fastest way to get route work done. I don't care if y'all believe me or not, I'm just telling you from my experience of doing route work, born and raised 20 years doing route work in high rise, no longer high rise, but storefront work. If you're working by remote, it is the fastest way to do work by trad backpack. So the reason why it's fast is because it eliminates the need for extra equipment, right? So here's the problem with working by remote. You have to hold the remote in your hand. I have yet to devise a system for having the remote actually on the handle. I mean, there's different options and ways, but the problem is with having a, a, a apparatus on the handle itself, you cannot operate the access of the water with the tool on a pole. You will need another way of controlling your means of water distribution. So remote is, is a well-rounded uh, thing to do when you're talking about dispersing your fluids, all right? With having the remote on the pole, you can have water on demand the same as with it in the hand. Hey, that run. So the problem with having it in the hand is that you have to hold the remote in your hand. I assure you this isn't an issue because if you're using the tools to go correspond with the remote, like a combination tool, like the flipper, it has to be a mop and a squeegee combination tool in order for you to move quickly. If you're going to use separate tools, this is not going to work. You could have it attached to the applicator itself and use a separate squeegee. But now, how are you going to operate when you need water with the remote? Yeah, you could put your holster in your tool and keep the mop in your left hand and have the remote. So I have it on a keychain, right? So here's how I do it. So let's say you have a room like this, right? As you can see, you have a window there, window there, window there. I am not going to hold it in my hand. I could, but I don't have to. Why? Because these windows are spaced out. And it only takes a few seconds to get enough water to clean these windows. Now, yes, the high flyer doesn't hold a lot of water, but this doesn't matter because you're not going to be soaking and saturating the window. You don't need a whole lot of water as you think you need to clean these windows. So it takes a momentary press. So here's an example. Oops. The good thing about having this set up, also, I found myself dropping my squeegee a few times. You never have to bend down. You could, uh, you know, pull it back up through the cord. All right, so here's an example. Here's a momentary press of the remote. If I could do this. Hold on one second.
All right, so I'm going to try and do this the best I can. Because I'm holding the phone in my hand. That's it. That's all you need, right? For that, you can wear it on your neck. All right, so let's mop this in. All right, so now we're going to show you why you would want to hold the remote in your hand. So with this momentary press of the remote won't suffice with this because you'll be doing it too much. Now for something like this, this is all about working smarter. So for something like this, you will want to keep the remote, right? in your hand and you can blow through these in no time with controlling the amount of water that you apply on the glass instead of dipping it in your bucket and getting drips all over the floor or and or ringing your mop out same thing goes with a non wagtail applicator or a non applicator like let's say you have a regular t-bar washer now that you will really have to rig out if you're doing it by bucket, but then that's your, your wasted time. All right. So you can have your rag in your left hand. If you're right handed, you clean the windows with the right, right hand. You have the remote in your left hand and the rag. That way you can wipe the frames down if you have to. All right, so something like this, you will wanna keep in your hand, right? Because you have a whole row of windows and you're gonna need to press that remote quite often. Now, when you're doing it by pole, I hold the remote in my hand. My dominant hand that's using to twist the pole because I'm right-handed, well, I'm ambidextrous, actually, but it's certain things that I'm dominant more with my right hand than uh, my left. Like when I'm cleaning windows, I, I, I alternate hands. When I'm, let's say, uh, writing, uh, like I'm, you know, signing a paper or something, I'll use my right hand. So with certain things that I have, look, cleaning lady's kind of squeegee from Home Depot. So uh, that's the differences of how you would want to, for those very few people who are working the way that I work, you will find that you won't want to work any other way because it just makes more sense, all right? You're walking with less equipment. You're compact. You have freedom of movement. You have less chances of leaving your tools around. Uh, it eliminates the need for all the equipment going in and out of route work. You just open up the trunk and throw your, your backpack on and, and you're good to go, man. You know, there is no lugging no buckets around. There is no changing of water. There is no wasting of water at the end of the day. There is no dumping water out, you know, because you don't want the water sitting around stagnant and, and smelling rancid. You see, all these things that I used to do, I used to keep that same water if it was predominantly clean into the next day. The problem with that is, is that sometimes that water, stagnant water can get funky, you know, and... If you're in a rush and you're running behind schedule, you don't have time to throw that water out. So you just kind of work with it. You know, uh, that takes work to do that. That's, that's an extra job. So if you eliminate these small little steps, that's really, really minute to some people. But when you think about it, all these little things 
if you get rid of them, you'd be surprised how much time and how much faster you will move. Yeah, you know, believe me or not, I don't care. You know, but uh, I don't work hard. You know, and that's that's what you got to do in your business. You got to think of ways that is going to make your job run smooth and easy with producing the same, if not more, results. All right. So that's that. However, you guys are using this remote backpack, whether you're using it just to pre soap up the windows before you actually do water pad polling. See, this application is good also for those who want to keep separate chemicals in this backpack, you know, whether it be acid or anything. And you don't want to contaminate your water fed system. But you need to do a process before you actually do water fed polling. This is good for that. All right. So let's say you have a new person. You're training them on water fed. Until they get used to uh, water fed. They may not be scrubbing properly. And depending on the soilness of the glass. It's kind of hard to explain to somebody. You, you need to spend a little bit more time because if they're not familiar with it, they're just not going to know. So rather than to play around with that, you can have a guy just go right in front of them with your uh, applicator, whether it be a regular T-bar mop or your high flyer. I suggest a high flyer is probably best for agitating the dirt because it's flat. It stays on the surface. Uh, you can scrub the whole window using a pole without bending at all, and it could be scrubbed very nicely. And then that person could come by, not fear of having the water contaminated because you wanted to have soap. Also, it eliminates the need for having to put a line of soap directly on the brushes. Because the problem with that is you'll have to wait for that brush to have all the soap out. Unless you're just rinsing it down from a distance, meaning off the glass. Problem with that also is, is that if those jets are shooting out and that soap is still dripping on the brush bristles, it is going to hit those jets and it's going to shoot soap on the windows. So thus creating spotting. So you don't want to do that either. You see all these little details. I explain to y'all because I don't want y'all to have to go through it. All right. Don't do as I do. Seek as I saw. You know, there's a reason why I do certain things. And I may not always explain them, but I try to. So I'm explaining it because maybe some of you see me doing something. And then when y'all actually try to copycat that. It just, just doesn't work out. You're spinning your wheels, literally. Why? Because you don't know why I'm doing it. You know? Don't do as I do. See, because that's all. All right? Your reason may be different from the reasons that I may be doing things. All right? Just like how I use my backpack. Somebody else may use this in a different, totally different way. And as one guy in Australia said he will be using it for... Uh, was kind of interesting because I never thought of doing it that way. And, you know, it it has many uses to the person that could think of, you know. So basically, somebody that has an idea for something and could use something, they may be using it in a totally different way. But see, it works for them, you know. But this is Masters at Wagtail, and uh, I'm out of here. Macafracker.